Hello world, Stephen Michael Zach here, and today we're taking a look at the Apero Tank 80B. This is a brand new bicolor light. In fact, uh, these just hit Amazon, and uh, I was sent to, uh, was sent this by the manufacturer, but all of my opinions are my own, and I'm not getting paid to say anything. So. Before we start the review, I just want to uh, let everybody know that I will be using this uh, little plug cable here. Uh, this light is supposed to come with one, uh, but it did not. The manufacturer is awesome and they are sending me out the regular plug, but I really wanted to get a jump on this review, so I'll be using uh, my own, it's kind of like an old tape recorder plug. Uh, so just know that uh, that is what we're using. So let's jump right into this. And first off, this will cost you $329 on Amazon. And let's jump in and take a look at everything that it comes with. Now, first off, you get a very well padded case. Now, it is kind of wrinkly um, the way it's stitched together, uh, but that's fine. Usually cases are a little smoother than this, uh, but it feels absolutely fine. First off, we've got a very nice handle here. A Velcro handle. You do have these little strappy things to hold on like a, a light stand, uh, but they don't feel like they're the best. Um, in fact, you can see like the Velcro's, uh, I mean, it is stitched on, but um, I wouldn't put anything super heavy like a tripod in there, just a small light stand. And of course, you do get a place for your business card, which is nice. Uh, the zippers feel okay. Uh, they are decent and the padding on the case feels great as well. Uh, whatever is in here is not going to get destroyed. Now, opening this thing up, you get these straps like on the Aperture stuff, and you get this very nice uh, top piece of foam that's going to protect everything that's inside. So if you put anything heavy on here, uh, you'll be fine. Now, in the top pouch, you do get a little zipper pouch here, and inside you are going to get your instructions, and you are going to get uh, a fairly decent uh, padded arm strap here. No frills there, nothing to write home about, but it will work. And what I like about it is that it does have metal here and not plastic, so it will most likely not break on you. And let's go ahead and jump in. Now first off, you get a battery grip, uh, which is very, very cool. Now it does run on two Sony NPF batteries here. Uh, so that is that, we'll put that off to the side. And then you get your power brick here. We get the light itself. And then you have a little padded top here that you can remove. And inside you get this uh, small, not mini Bowens mount, I guess this is. It's, it's the proprietary mini Bowens mount. Uh, not thrilled on the mini Bowens mount, but we'll go into that later. Um, that's just a personal preference. And then underneath I have something very interesting. And as you can see inside the case, uh, very well padded. Everything is very well protected. Uh, this is a very nice case. But inside this cardboard box, uh, you get something that I couldn't figure out what it was until I figured out what it was. <laughs> and basically you get this mini Bowens mount plate. Now this is for if you're using an octagon softbox. Uh, on the back, you can actually unscrew and remove the ring and slide this in. It's basically a speed ring. Uh, I believe that's what they're called. Let me know if I'm saying it wrong. And you could slide that in and mount it onto the mini Bowens mount. And usually this comes with a cord, um, comes with a cord that I showed you at the top of the video uh, and the power brick here. Now, first off, let's discuss the accessories before we get into the light. Now, first off, you do get this battery grip, uh, which is made of all plastic. And it does have a receiver here as well. Um, mounting the batteries is not very easy. One side is easy, the other side, you kind of have to push down. And then it does have these little battery releases here. Um, they seem to pop out fairly easy. Um, there you go. And then this just plugs right into the back of the light here. And I really like the fact that it is this kind of uh, receptor. So you can get a D-tap cable and actually D-tap this to, and let's make sure this is going the right way. And you can actually D-tap this to a V-mount battery, which is very cool. Let's go ahead and pop this on like so. And there we go, you've got your handheld setup. Very, very nice. Um, and this feels pretty good. I mean, I would definitely, I would definitely be able to walk around with this and light somebody. Uh, it's a little bit heavy, but most of them are because this is made so well. Um, but there we go. Very, 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 very simple. 
Now, let's talk about the ballast because that is very, very interesting. Now, you do get a V-mount clip here for the ballast, which is very interesting. And this does actually slide out. There is like a little tab back here that you could pull out. And you could actually just slide this out and use the brick itself or slide it into this little caddy, which is very interesting. Um, it's interesting and it's very cool that they give you the option. I would just keep it in the caddy. Now, plugging this thing in, uh, again, this is not the wire that comes with it. This is my own personal wire, uh, but it plugs in like that. And then you hang it on the light stand like that. Only problem here is that um, to plug it into the light, that's at the bottom. I don't know why they didn't flip it around so that this would be at the top and the plug would be at the bottom. Even the V-mount back here is upside down. Um, so what I would most likely suggest is to take this and let's see if we can just flip this little cradle around. And maybe that's it. Maybe somebody else had this model before me because I believe this is a demo model. And there you go. Just flip it around. You should be good to go. Um, then the hangy thing is at the right height and uh, you have the wire here. So very cool. That all works very, very, very well. Problem solved. Now let's talk about the Bowens mount. Now, first off, the Bowens release is a little button here at the bottom and it feels pretty good. When you slap on the Bowens mount here, uh, there is a little bit of wobble. So I wouldn't want to have this thing on the hand cradle and be walking with it and be near sound uh, because you might get a little bit of wobble there. But it feels pretty strong. And of course, it comes right off. Very, very cool. Now, I am not a huge fan of the um, of these mini Bowens mounts, of these proprietary Bowens mounts, but you are starting to see these more and more. Uh, so hopefully there will be more and more adapters coming out. And speaking of adapters, they give you this little speed ring here so you could slide it in the back of your uh, Octagon softbox and slap it on to uh, this nice and easy. Now, one thing I would have liked to see, one thing I, I really wanted to see instead of this is I really wish this came with a full Bowens mount adapter rather than this kind of like plate for an Octagon softbox. Um, I think that making this a regular Bowens mount so it will work with all my Bowens mount stuff would have been much better than giving me this ring. Uh, they could have just sold a, a pop-up uh, Octagon softbox uh, and this could have just been on it. Um, so very odd that they included that. I get why they did it, um, but I much rather would have an adapter for my other Bowens mount accessories. Now, let's talk about this light because there is a lot to talk about. This light is rock solid. It is, feels like it's mostly some kind of metal uh, with a bit of plastic on the back and front. The lighting array here is uh, in rows and there is a fan and heat sink. Now, one thing I really dig is not only the size and how small this is, but I really like the uh, adjustment here. It's very, very odd. I've never quite seen anything like this uh, with the way it's kind of here and then goes up and it's got like a disc here, but it's very, 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 very smooth. You can get it to any position. There's a lot of clearance. Um, really love this. And the fact that they give you a very nice handle and it's a ratchet handle as well uh, and a very nice ratchet handle. The yoke feels strong. The connection down here is strong. You could either mount it uh, this way or this way, they give you that option, which is great. And it really just feels like a very, very solid light. I am very impressed. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on and take a look at the functionality. Okay, so plugging this thing in is very easy. Plug it in, turn it on. And as you can see, it is actually in Chinese. Now this is very easy to correct. You just go to this last menu here and you click the, this button until you get to this E or this symbol. Give it a little turn, and there you go now. You are completely in English. Very, very simple to do. Now, there are a few options here. You can reset, so there is a sticker on here that uh, tells you what the phone app is, and yes, there is Bluetooth. There is a phone app in here. Now, hopefully, we are going to be able to get some updates via Bluetooth. That is my hope. But you can reset the Bluetooth here. You can go into the channels. Uh, you could set the channels of which there are 999. We're not gonna go through them all. Clicking 
again here, you have the fan. Now, there's only two settings with the fan. There is off and there is one which is on. Now, I have to put my ear this close to hear the fan. It is incredibly quiet. Now, I ran this for about 15, 20 minutes and I did not hear the fan once. I had to be very, very quiet and I could just barely make it out. So, the fan is super awesome. For all of you who hate fan noise, this is not a problem at all. Now we go to the main menu where we have 100 and it goes down in increments of one all the way to zero. Now one thing I notice is that this is not, the, not a stepless light, uh, but that is fine. And this goes from 2500 Kelvin, and as you can see, it is not stepless at all, all the way up to 9,999 Kelvin. Now, unfortunately, I do not have a spectrometer, so I can't test the quality, uh, but it looks pretty darn good to my eye. Uh, maybe skewing a bit. Um, to my eye, it looks maybe a little greenish, but I'm not sure. But all in all, Great controls. Uh, you do get a very, very nice bright screen. Thank you so much for giving us a, a legible screen. Now we go into the special effects. And of course you can control the brightness here. And you do get, uh, let's go ahead and click this. And you do get multiple speeds up to 10 in every special effect mode. But this one is heart. And give it a turn, we go into alarm which basically just flashes the light on and off. Then we go far to near, which basically just makes it brighter and uh, softer. Then we have strobe, we have flash, and then we have candle. Now, the candle works very, very well on this. Um, you could actually lower the speed. So we, when we take it down to zero, it's not bad. Um, it's still a little bit fast for my taste, um, but it isn't terrible. Next we have TV, and we'll go ahead and turn that on. And the TV works just fine. Uh, nothing to write home about. And then we get lightning, and then we get lightning two, and then we have lightning one as well. So two different styles of lightning, which I think candle and the two lightnings are probably what I would use the most on this light. And that's it. Those are the special effects. There's not many. Let's go ahead and take a look at the phone app. Okay, so here we are in the phone app and there are quick buttons here. Now, as you can see, this does fade very slowly into your changes, um, which is fine. Uh, fading, you are gonna get this very slow fade. Uh, let's fade this down. And as you can see, there you go. Now, for some reason, when I use the phone app and I go to like, let's go to like, we're at 3%. Now I'm not getting that extra tungsten uh, in there. Uh, let's go ahead and change it to 5,500 Kelvin. And I've noticed that now that's at 5,500 Kelvin, we're at 3%, I am actually getting some flickering on this light. Uh, there is some flickering going on. Uh, I don't quite know why I'm getting flickering on the unit, but I am. Let's go to like 2%. Try to get this to 2%. So yeah, at 3% I am actually getting, you can see it on camera, I'm actually getting some flickering and uh, we are getting, uh, it's just the tungsten bulbs are activated even though I'm at 5500 Kelvin. So that is something to be aware of with this light. Now it does look like there is a plus minus green, uh, but I've tried it. It doesn't seem like uh, you can really enter anything. And I don't really see that much of a change here. Let's drop this back down to zero. So it doesn't look like the plus minus green does anything. Now you can turn this on and off via the app. That does work. Uh, now there is a plus minus green slider here. Again, it doesn't look like it is doing anything, so there is no plus minus green in here. Let's change this all back to 0.00m. There we go, so the plus minus green slider doesn't work. Of course, then you've got buttons at the bottom here for color, which is not uh, for this. 
scene, which gives you all the special effects that you have. Now, uh, police, fire truck, and ambulance do not work on this. Neither does any of the other ones below uh, Heartbeat. Uh, but everything seems to work there. Then you have this thing for music. Now, uh, the music function does not work on this app either. Uh, I think it's for some of their other lights. And then you get photo where you can take a picture and color match. Again, I think that's just for the, uh, I mean, it does somewhat work here. Uh, let's capture the orange there. And uh, there you go, it went slightly orange. Not the best color picker in the world. And let's go back to 5500 Kelvin. So there you go, the phone app. You can click this. You can, it says 2 light 29 FF. That must mean, that's probably the, 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 the number of the light. Uh, you can go to different groups, all groups. And it looks like you can save parameters and read parameters as well. So the app works okay. Not the best app in the world. Um, so there you go, there you have it. Okay, so let's start off with what I don't like about this light. Now, when you are at between one and 5%, uh, not only is this thing going to turn tungsten at 5,500 Kelvin, uh, but I noticed at 3%, this thing was flickering, uh, which is a, a kind of a red flag. Um, now, maybe it's the unit I got, or maybe they can fix that through a Bluetooth update. Uh, you do have Bluetooth, although I did not see anything that would allow you to update the firmware in here, which is unfortunate with the phone app. Uh, but that is something to be aware of that it is, it is very flickery down there. Now, taking a look at some other things that I don't like. Uh, first off, this thing was in a different language. I uh, read the instruction manual, was very easy to figure out. Even without reading the instruction manual, that is fine. Now, my unit did come with a little bit of damage here. I don't know the weather because this is a test model or whatnot. Um, but that is something to be aware of. Hopefully that's not just like the paint, like the metal wearing, uh, like becoming deoxi deoxidized or something. Um, but it's fine. Don't really care. It's not a big issue. Now let's talk about this dish. Uh, it is a little loose, but when I put it onto this hand thing, uh, onto the hand, uh, Hollywood hand thing, um, it was fine. I didn't hear it. Um, speaking of the Hollywood hand thing, uh, this thing is terrible. Um, when I put brand new fresh batteries in, I really had to, I really had to kind of press down and make sure they locked in very tightly. And if it didn't work, I had to take the batteries out, put them on the charger for a few seconds, put them back in, even though they were fully charged. Um, and really just not a fan of this. This is cheap plastic. Uh, it's fine when it works, it works just fine. Um, but I'd say definitely replace this. You can go probably go find something made by Andy, C Andy Cine that will actually work over this. Uh, plus I'm not, don't really like the, um, the battery indicator. It's not very accurate when this thing works at all. Now, moving on to uh, some more things I didn't like about this. Um, well, I, I, this isn't necessarily a dislike, but it is something I found interesting. Why it did come with, oh, well, let's talk about the mini Bowens mount. The, the elephant in the room, the mini Bowens mount. I am not a fan of these. Um, you are seeing these more and more, so I guess you will be able to find adapter pieces for them. Uh, I'm not crazy about this. I really wish they included an adapter for a full Bowens mount so I can mount my other stuff. However, they did include this, I believe it's a speed ring, uh, so you can take your existing octagon boxes, slide, uh, remove the ring, slide this in, and mount it right onto here, uh, which is a very nice addition. Uh, very, very cool that they did that, but I would love to have been able to take my classic Aperture dish and uh, replace this with that, just to see uh, what kind of quality it was, to see if I could eliminate that multiple shadowing, uh, which this does have because, again, it is this new design that puts a hot spot in the center and really focuses the light. Now, the Bowen's mount release is this little button at the bottom. It is fine. Um, it worked, feels pretty solid, so not really a con at all. And of course, these buttons in the back just aren't super premium. They work. Uh, they do have a nice clicking tactile to them, and they do click very nicely. Uh, all in all, I think you should be okay with that. Now, from the bad to the good, let's start off with the 
power pack here. I love the fact that they give you the option to slide this out and put this on the floor or slide it in. You get either a hanging chain, which I'm not a fan of, or you do get a V-mount battery lock, which I will always be using. Um, just works very well. You get, uh, well, I'm not sure if you get plenty of cord because again, this is my cord because they forgot to send the cord. But I do like the fact that you do get this barrel cord so you can just run out and you can get uh, a barrel cord to detap and just slap on a uh, V-mount battery and not have to even worry about the ballast. Now I love the fact that you do get a hard switch and I love the fact that this is a very bright screen. Now the special effects are okay. I do like the two lightnings and the candle. The rest I would never use. Uh, and I like the fact that you can control the speed. Now, I really wish you could control the color temperature. So if I wanted to do some kind of like fantasy fire, I could make my, my candle light a little bluer, but you are just stuck in whatever color temperature they want you to be in, uh, which is unfortunate. And again, I don't think you can update this with firmware. I may be wrong on that. Hopefully I am. But uh, getting around the menu system is fairly easy. Now, the fan in this is fantastic. You can turn it off, but why? You cannot hear it. I ran this thing for about 45 minutes, could not hear the fan at all. It is whisper quiet. You literally have to do this to hear it. So the fan is awesome. Uh, you get a lot of channels for, uh, for programming these. So all in all, very, very, very cool. It does have Bluetooth. You do get 100 to 0%, but we talked about the flickering issue down around 3%, and you do get uh, 2,500 Kelvin up to 9,999. Now again, don't have a spectrometer, can't tell you if that's accurate, um, but uh, you do have those options. And lastly, things I love is the yoke is rock solid. Uh, very, very well made. And once you lock this, it is not going anywhere, which is awesome. I love the design. I uh, love the fact that uh, this thing is very versatile. Okay, so let's quickly test if this has any flicker whatsoever. So I am going to start adjusting this. And we're at 125, uh, 320, we're at 640. We're at 1250, and let's crank this all the way up to 10,000. Uh, so as you can see, really no flicker off this light whatsoever. Let's drop below 50, let's go down to 25, to eight to five. Yeah, as you can see, absolutely no flickering on this light, which is great. Okay, so here is the skin test now. Something I want to point out, and I did point it out earlier uh, in the wall test, but I'm going to point it out here, is when you drop below, let's go to about 4%, you are getting massive flickering, and you're also getting like this. It suddenly changes to tungsten. Now, you can correct for the tungsten by upping, the, uh, upping this to about, uh, upping this to about 650 that does correct it. So six, uh, six, uh, 6,550, uh, let's go down a little more, and you can play with this until it does correct. And uh, about, it's different all the time, uh, but we are about at 600 Kelvin, so that did correct it a little bit. Uh, but again, below 5%, we are still, I still notice some flickering uh, and let me go to 3%, and once again, 3%, we're getting some flickering here. Uh, so you can play with this and sort of kind of fix it, uh, but the flickering down on the end is a real problem. So, yeah, just wanted to point that out. Here is about uh, 51%. Here's the light at 100%. It is super bright. And here we are back at 10% uh, right here. So just want to make you aware of that little problem. So who is this for and should you buy it? Now that is the question um, because this thing is $329, $330. You're talking the Godox ML. You're talking the, the Nanlite 60B and uh, the 60, Nanlite 60B and the Nanlite 60. Um, it's kind of expensive to be a budget option. Uh, especially with the fact that, uh, again, you're locked into this proprietary mini Bowens mount and an, the app is not as good as it is on some of those other products. 
And again, this thing flickers at 3%. Now, I don't know if it's just my unit or whether they all do that. Uh, I would be interested to find out. Um, but uh, that might be an issue if you are going to use like the bare minimum, minimum of light. However, um, I am not going to be using the bare minimum of light. I will most likely be cranking this thing up. Uh, it'll be used as a hair light or be used to light products or things like that. So with that said, um, this isn't a bad light. It is whisper quiet. Love that. Um, who is this for? Filmmakers, if you're doing commercials, if you're doing interviews, you could definitely get away with using this as a, as a hair or some kind of fill light. Um, it is not bad. The only issue I found is with that little bit of flickering. Um, but again, not an issue for me. I'm not going to use it in that capacity. So all in all, very, very cool. A very, very interesting light. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. I'm kind of on a fence whether I could recommend it or not because there's just so many good things in this. Uh, this is like the closest I've seen uh, a new product come to being uh, decent, uh, like Godox or Nanlite or Aperture. Um, there are just a few quirks with it that I don't care for. Um, but uh, all in all, it is a pretty good light. Not a budget option again. I wish it were a little bit cheaper because then I really could recommend it. Um, but given the stuff that it comes with, the fantastic case, uh, the fact that it is built rock solid, uh, the yoke they did an excellent job on, um, I would say it'd be worth a check out. So that's it. Those are my thoughts, but I want to know yours. So leave your questions and comments in the notes below. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to mash that bell button to be notified we drop a brand new video. And feel free to use the links below as it helps out the channel. I'm Stephen Michael Zach, and this is new to me.